Today's guest is entrepreneur and expert in online marketing and sales funnels. She's the CEO of Marketing Choreography, host of the podcast, The Funnel After Party. Please welcome to the show, Lexi Ruffel. Hello, Lexi. Welcome to the show. Great to have you, have you here. How are you Thanks doing? So much for, I'm doing great. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah, it's awesome to, to have you on board and it's, it, it's really cool to... Um, see and, and dive a little bit more into online marketing, sales funnels, and how all of that works. So we, we got to know each other in the funnel after party uh, group. Um, yes. But before we dive into all the interesting stuff, um, tell us a little bit more about yourself, your story. Who are you? Yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, we'll go back to, to the very beginning. Um, I was born into a very entrepreneurial family. That, hard, that word's so hard to say. Every time I try to say, I'm like that word. Um, but my, my family, um, just all entrepreneurs. Um, my mom owned a dance studio. Um, my grandma still owns a dance studio. She's still running it. Um, and my dad has just started every business out there. Um, the current obsession is selling shoes. Um, he, he likes to resell shoes. Um, he also owns a a solar company. And yeah, so it's just uh, been in the family uh, forever. Um, so that's, that's kind of fun. Um, you know, a lot of people don't don't have that that background. And they're like, well, my family wasn't, we weren't entrepreneurs at all. And I'm the first entrepreneur in the family. But um, that's not not really the story. And I, I've never filled out a job application in my life. Um, which is kind of crazy. I just always found <laughs> found ways to make money other ways. Um, you know, I, I did have a job. Um, I, I've worked at, at a dance studio, um, but it was like through connections that, that I yeah. got. These. So it was never like, okay, I'm going to fill out a job application and, and do an interview. Um, <laughs> and so that's just never been the case. Um, I have been a dancer my whole life. Um, I, grew up dancing. Like I said, my mom owned a studio. So mm. I grew up, grew up dancing in the studio. Um, I say, I always say I was a, a studio rat. Like I was just at the studio all the time. Um, and, um, and so then, you know, I found, um, I was doing jazz, I was doing tap, ballet, all of that. And then I found ballroom and, and that, um, kind of became my love and, um, and so I, right now I, I teach, um, I dance professionally on the circuit. Um, Ooh. and so, yeah, it's, it, it was good times and I still teach ballroom a little bit. I, I have a few, um, lessons that, that I teach every week, um, mm -hmm. teaching young kids. Um, and, and that's, that's fun. You know, I, I run that business, um, for a while and, you know, had to figure out how to get the lessons and, and get the people in the door and, and figure that out for myself um, and figure out how to, how to market myself to, to get students in the door. Okay. Um, and so, you know, that's, that's kind of the, the dance side of things. So I always say like, I'm a former professional ballroom dancer that uh, became a marketing nerd. Um, and so now, now that's, that's what I'm doing. I, I run my company called Marketing Choreography. Um, and, you know, just along my journey, I, I found funnels and I found click funnels. Um, I'm sure a lot of you out there are familiar with click funnels. If you're not, um, you should be. It's, it's a great <laughs> software that um, it's a funnel building software and um, teaches. It, it helps you build funnels. It's, it's a software for that. Um, and it's you know, it's, it's been, been a, a good journey. Um, and, and that's, that's what I'm up to nowadays. Yeah. Awesome. So yeah. can, can you explain for those who are not really into funnels, what are, what are, what are funnels in general? Yeah, for sure. Um, funnels are 
are, it's basically taking, instead of looking at a website, a website, you go to a website and you see all of these thing, things happening. Um, there's information here and there's buttons here and there's all of these things to do on a website. And a funnel is a great way to go, okay, this is exactly what I want my customer to do. Mm. I want them to go to this page. I want them to click on this button. I want them to buy this thing. And then I, and it takes them through a series of steps and kind of funnels them in. Um, and it's very, it's a very clear path um, rather than going to a website. And it's very like broad, like these are all of the steps that, that you <laughs> could take. And these are all the things you can do and people kind of get lost on it. Yeah. But a funnel is like, okay, here's the headline. Here's exactly what I want you to do. Either, you know, I want you to opt in and, and put your email address and I'll send you this thing, or I want you to buy this thing, or I want you to sign up for this challenge, or I want you to sign up for this free summit. Um, but it's just a very um, clear path um, to, to get somebody in the door and, and kind of funnel them through um, this, this funnel, right? Yeah. So. And the, the, the interesting part was that it's like my background is coming from a large organization, which is like, multi-billion dollar and so on, where, yeah. where you don't really see that world. You're not really attached to that world. And now being entrepreneur the last two years, it's like, hey, that's just normal. But before yeah. I entered into that world, like I wasn't knowing about it at all. And that's, yeah. that's quite interesting. So how is it with, with, with your clients and your customers you work with? Do they know about funnels already or do, are they exploring it? Yeah, a lot of people that I uh, work with have been introduced with funnels or been introduced to funnels. Mm -hmm. um, and so they they've kind of already had that that introduction and and that base knowledge mm -hmm. and and they they kind of get it. Um, and so then when they when they come to me, I help I help them understand it even more. Yeah. Um, and help them kind of understand the big picture of what's going on um, because it's really easy to get stuck in in kind of the the tech of the funnel and in that individual funnel itself um, mm -hmm. but there's a lot going on around that funnel to actually get people to it um, and it, you know the process afterwards as well and in the follow-up and and there's just so much going on and and people will get get stuck in in the funnel. I, I had one lady that I was talking to and she said, well, once I, you know, I'll put my funnel up and and it's just going to like get the leads, right? It's just going to like do that. <laughs> I was like, no, that's not really how it works. Like you actually have to do stuff to get people to the funnel. Um, they're still marketing. It's it's just a tool um, yeah. to to collect the collect the money or collect the leads or take them through the process that that you want them to go through. Yeah. So what I want to look back towards your how you grew up and what yeah. did, did you learn from the, the early entrepreneur childhood and ha being exposed to a lot of entrepreneurs in your in your family? What did you learn to to run your own business? Yeah, um, I mean, first off, I just knew that I couldn't work for anybody like that just was not ever going to be a thing in my world. Um, and so it was like, I, I want to be my own boss. And, and, it, you know, I, I also saw the, the ups and downs of, of my parents running their own businesses and, you know, there, there were highs in there and, and there were lows um, because that's just kind of how it goes. There's, there's not a ton of stability um, unless you, you can really find that. But a lot of times it was like, okay, sometimes things were, were, were really great. And sometimes yeah, yeah. things were kind of like down. And, and so, um, you know, it's just interesting growing up with, with that, um, and watching that and learning how to, to handle those, those highs and handle those, those lows. And, you know, I think that's, that's helped me as I've started building my businesses and, and just seeing, um, seen uh seeing that as i was growing up and now going okay I, i understand that and i know how to handle that and and i think that it's it, it makes me better you know and it, it's made me stronger as as an entrepreneur so, yeah it's yeah. it's quite funny that you you say that because when i came from the protective world of a large corporation then you don't know that it's like yeah money yeah. is coming <laughs> right <laughs> no, i was basically I was more than 20 years working in corporations where I know that at least 
most of the time I was knowing that the money is coming, even if you are right. not performing, even if you're not doing right. the utmost. But now it's, yeah, of course there's maybe, depending on which business you are in, maybe there's a month where you have no income. Yeah. And then afterwards, like there's a month where you have triple the income or whatever. It's, right. <laughs> it's quite interesting as well <clears throat> from a teaching perspective that, Yep. If you're a young entrepreneur or starting in, in your career on entrepreneurs, that's not what people tell you. They say, yeah, money is coming. Just open the right. funnel, like you said. <laughs> yeah, it just, you know, I, there's there's so much possibility as as an entrepreneur with the things that you can do and, and the world that you can create for yourself. Um, but but you've got to you've got to put in the work and you've got to put in the time to to make that a thing. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's. That's kind of how I see it. So then we met in the funnel, uh, funnel after party group. So yeah. tell us a little bit more about wh what that is that other people can find it and understand what they could get out of it. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, I started this, this funnel after party group um, because I saw a lot of people who were struggling in the click funnels world. And, you know, there, there was a time that, that I was as well. Um, you know, I've had my ups, I've had my downs and, and I just saw this possibility to be able to provide more guidance and more help, um, for people that are just starting into funnels and into online marketing. And, you know, I was like, I can help people fast track this journey and, and go faster than, mm -hmm. than I did. And so, um, I looked at, I, I don't know if, if your audience is familiar with the one funnel away challenge. Um, Most probably not, probably not. Um, the one funnel away challenge is a challenge that, um, Russell Brunson, who is the owner of click funnels, um, he started in, uh, he takes people through a 30 day challenge that teaches them how to build out a sales funnel um, and teaches, you know, some of the the greatest marketing principles out there. Mm. And there's, you know, it's, it's amazing. Um, there's so much great content, um, but a lot of people get super overwhelmed with it because, you know, they want to build their business and they want to build this funnel and there's just so much to learn. Um, and so I, I found, you know, an opportunity to, to come in and go, okay, I, I can help with this. And so, you know, I started the funnel after party group. It's kind of like, okay, you went through this challenge, you're starting funnels and now it's time for the after party. It's time to really figure out um, how to put all of the pieces together and, and understand what is, what is that big picture um, of your business and mm -hmm. how can you market it? And, and what are all the cool ways that you can put this together and, and what's the value ladder that you have? And, and then what are all the details to actually make that happen? Um, because, you know, it's one thing to see the big picture, um, but then you also have to understand how to, how to put everything together and all the little details that need to go into, you know, your launches and your funnels and, and your products and, and building everything out. And so, um, it's, it's a great community that, that I've started to build and, and, you know, I do, I do lives in there and, um, I talk about the tech of the funnels because there's some people that, that get caught up with, with the tech. Um, and I also talk about the, the strategy of, of the funnels and, and the marketing. Um, and so there's a good mix and, and, you know, people are in there asking questions and, and just trying to to figure out this this game of of online marketing. Yeah, so, yeah. And it, it's it, it's quite funny because that's how I I was basically flushed into your group as well. It was, I was yeah. <laughs> I was attending the one funnel away challenge because for me it's always interesting working with innovation coming from a large uh, organization like like I said is you're not really into all the nitty gritty details. You know how marketing and sales structures work with. Yeah. Like if you have 5,000 people and more, but yeah. that's completely, it's not completely different, but slightly different from an understanding if you run your own business. And that's why I really wanted to, to go into it and doing it myself. But I also can see they're doing so great work in, in what they're putting out there. That yeah. so much is uh, that if you're, if you're not able to step back, you will not be able to get through it in a way that right. you have something working afterwards. So it's, right. I think that's, that's super smart move you do in a way that taking people by the hand and helping them, Hey, that's how it's working. That's how it's growing. 
Um, yeah. and, and specifically with the community you are building. I like that very much because it's like people help, help each other and get to know each other. And yeah. through that, it helps basically building better businesses right for everyone and that's that's the great yeah. thing for for a lot of people then yeah for sure I, it's it's been fun building it and you know just seeing seeing people grow and the questions they're asking and and yeah it's it's been really great so if if we if we go a little bit into like innovative innovative ways of thinking What, what do you yeah. see are the challenges for the people inside of your group, inside like your clients and so on with innovation, innovative ways of thinking? Yeah, um, I think that generally entrepreneurs are actually very, very creative and, and very innovative. And um, sometimes that's actually to a fault um, is, is kind of what I've seen um, people have all of these ideas and, and all of these amazing things going inside of their head and going, oh, I want to do this and I want to change the world and I want to impact everyone. And, and I have this idea. And, and, and so I think, you know, in, in my community as, as an overall whole, that's, that's not lacking, you know, yeah. the, yeah. the creativity and the innovation is, is not lacking. But I think um, what I do see is that people don't know how to rein that in and turn it into something. Yeah. And so it's just like all of these things going on and, and just like incredible ideas. Um, and they just want to keep, keep throwing out those ideas, but you really got to turn that into something and you really have to turn that into this plan and, and this organized plan um, to, to make those things come to life. Um, but, you know, I, I think that, that entrepreneurs as, as an overall whole are, are very creative and, and very, very innovative. So, yeah. And that's yeah. interesting that you said it's like, also when we, when we talked last time, it was like, how do you build different funnel structures on top of each other that you, you basically can, can utilize your ideas. And that was right. one of my, one of my biz, biggest mistakes in the past was the same. It's like, I've had so many ideas, which I started at the same time, which lead right. to nothing because you don't have a product or a service which you're attaching to it and you don't have a, a funnel or let's say in, in a wider terms, a sales process, which brings that to market. Right. So it's great to have great ideas, but if you can't put them into, into the world and people are able to buy it or able, able to engage with it, then it doesn't, doesn't help. Exactly. Exactly. And you know, that's, that's part of why marketing choreography was born. Yeah. Um, was because of that because it was like okay we need to we need to choreograph this we need to put this into a plan um because your ideas are incredible and i look at it and i go oh my goodness look at all of those amazing things yeah. Yeah. let's let's put that into something um because the world needs to hear that how, how do you how do you systematize that in while helping your 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 clients specifically if you take step step back from a marketing total perspective how do you how do you help your clients yeah so you know the the first thing is is really just that that discovery and and making sure that i understand all of the ideas and all of the skills that the mm. person that i'm working with has um that's that's the first thing and and understanding all of the products that they have and all the things that that already exist um you know maybe even the the list that they already built that they don't even realize that they're like oh i have that right like i have all of these things already and so really that that first phase is going what do we have let's let's get everything out on the table mm. and then we start to understand where the holes are and so then we can turn that into into a plan and go, okay, you're missing this portion. Like you have not been creating enough noise with what you're doing. Hmm. You've launched a ton of things. Like you've launched a million funnels, but you didn't really create enough noise around it. And so that funnel isn't doing anything for you. Um, or you look at it and you go, okay, you have all of these products built, um, but you haven't actually launched any of them. You just, you've just been creating products. Um, hmm. And so it's just taking a look at, okay, what, what does um, that person have and what things are they missing? Okay, now let's create a plan to turn it into something. 
And we need to make sure that we have all of the the resources and all of the market resources and make sure that, okay, you know, what, what is the list that we have? Or, you know, do you have a podcast to get leads or how are you getting those leads? And, and then going into how are you creating the noise for, uh, for all of those people that you're collecting and then what launches are you doing and what products are we using and what's the plan and what are all the details and um and so that's kind of the the process that that i take people through yeah and that's i i can't imagine how much value that is for for an entrepreneur who hasn't been in that world because i yeah. i 100 see that even with bigger clients i work with they're not yeah. having figured that out right? in, in all the details. So yeah. maybe they're not using a sales funnel or anything, even if they should. Yeah. Um, but it's, I, I think there's, there's a lot more when it comes spe specifically in the online world, because that's, yeah. I mean, it's old, but as well new for a lot of businesses. Yeah. Well, and I think the biggest thing is, you know, just helping people find the clarity too. That's, that's been, one of the greatest things that I've seen as I've run people through, you know, my system and, and what I do, people just find so much clarity. Yeah. I go, Oh, okay. I, I get it. And here's the options. And okay. I could use this funnel versus using this funnel or, you know, some people they're not even ready for a funnel and we've got to do something else. And, yeah. and yeah. that's okay. I just, I think, I think, uh, you know, people that know funnels and understand that it's such a great, um, starting point. And so that's why I, I decided to start there. Um, but you don't have to know funnels in order to yeah. go through marketing choreography. I just, I like to work with those people that do. Yeah. So. How, how, how did you get to the name marketing, marketing choreography? choreography? Yeah. So, I mean, what? talking about the, the dance background from, from the beginning, um, I, I was a professional ballroom dancer. And so, um, We, we have to learn choreography as, as dancers and, and we work on the choreography and we make it better. Um, and, and so that's, that's kind of how, how I came to it. It was like, okay, well, I want to help people with marketing now. Um, you know, I've been learning marketing and, and now it's, it's time for me to help people with it. And, um, And so I was like, I'm going to tie my, my dance background into it. And, and so I threw in the choreography into it. And, and so that's, that's kind of where it came from, you know, just tying the, the dance and the marketing. Um, and it's so applicable because um, marketing is an art um, and putting all of your pieces together and, um, and working on it and changing it to, to make it better and, and dealing with when it goes poorly or when it goes well and and it's all you know just a, a piece of art and a piece of choreography that that you're putting together so that's that's how i i came up with it so how, how do you use then your 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 knowledge of uh, professional dancing inside inside of your work and as well on giving the understanding towards your clients um yeah i mean you know i think one Uh, people, people love dance. Um, and so it's, it's such a, a fun metaphor to use. And, um, and so I think, I think more than anything, it's like the lessons that, that I learned from dance mm -hmm. and I, I can take those and, and I can talk about those in, in the marketing. Um, and so I think that's, that's more how, how I bring it into it. Um, mm -hmm. and just going, okay, you know, these are, these are some of the things that, that I learned learn from dance and and now we can come and we can bring them into um into the marketing so so one thing i i, I talk to a lot of entrepreneurs and and everyone is sharing the, the the nice and and shiny things what are things where where you said like that didn't work out as i as it was planned and i learned a ton of it do you have any story you, yeah. you're willing to share um, yeah, for sure. I mean, I have a couple of stories that, that stand out. Um, there, there's one story that, um, we built the summit. Um, we built, uh, I don't know if people in, in your world are, are Most probably not. Summits. So, um, summits are, are hot marketing, uh, funnel right now. They're, they're really hot. Um, and basically what you do is, is you get a whole bunch of speakers, to come and speak and you interview them 
And these are people that potentially have your clients and your list of people and you bring them on to speak and then you get them to promote, Mm -hmm. um, which uh, allows your list to grow um, because you're interviewing them, they're promoting it to their list and then you actually gain um, them onto your list. And so you find people that are complementary to what you're doing, um, not necessarily people that you're, you're competing with, not necessarily people that are doing exactly what you're doing that, but but people that are, are complimentary. And so, um, you know, a, a couple of years ago, we, we built a, a summit and, and there was a lot of hype around it and it was great. We gained so many leads from it. Um, and it was so fabulous and where it failed is that we didn't follow up with anything. And so it was like, we had all of these leads sitting there and they just sat there. Um, and yeah, and it was like, what are we doing? And so, you know, that's part of why marketing choreography was born as well, because it was like, that was just so dumb. We didn't, we didn't look at the big picture and go, why are we actually doing the summit? Okay. One to gain the leads, but then let's make some money on it as well. Like what can we do after to push them through to our next thing? And so that's, that's one story, um, that, that comes to mind. The, another story that comes to mind is just, you know, and I think a lot of people and a lot of entrepreneurs probably do this. Like you build out your whole entire product, right? You're like so excited about your product. You're so excited about your thing. And then you forget to market it, right? Like you, (laughs) you put it together and you've got this amazing thing. And then it's like, okay, what about the noise? What about the launch? What about all of that? And, and we totally forgot to do that side of it. We had the product side of it. We had that piece down. Um, Mm -hmm. But it was just like we didn't actually come back in and, and um, we didn't make the noise around it. We didn't do a launch. And then because we were so discouraged because we spent all of our time building the product, we kind of just put it on the shelf. Um, and so I think a lot of people probably get stuck in that trap as well. Yeah. Um, so those those are a couple of stories that come to mind. That's nice. Yeah. So you're, you're mentioning... Uh, a lot of times like building a list and so on i was just yep. realizing most probably a lot of people in my ecosystem have no idea what you're talking about so can you yeah. explain a little bit what, what what is a list and what is behind that yeah so you know in online marketing um you want to build your email list because that's that's one way that you can communicate with with your people is through email. Um, I mean, there's, there's other ways and, but email is, is such a, a key thing. You want to build that email list and there's lots of different ways that, that you can build it. Um, you know, there's lead magnets where you get somebody to put in their email address and you give them something for free. Um, there's the summit that I talked about about um but there's there's different ways that that you can build it but it's so key to have that um because that's that's how you can you can make your money you you build out you build your list and then when you want to offer something you have somebody to actually promote your stuff to um because you've been you've been talking to them and you've been communicating with them and you've been giving them value and then they trust you and then you you come in and you can actually um offer them a product um but that's it's so such a big thing in in online marketing to to build that list and really just in any business like your list is is so powerful um and you know i just had i just had a client that she had so many people on her list and she deleted almost all of them. I was like, Ooh. what are you doing? Like you had all of those leads. Like, like why did you delete them? Um, so don't delete them. Like you, you just never know um, what you might be able to, to sell them, but uh, don't, don't delete your list and actually collect leads. Um, that's, that's so important. Um, collect those leads and, and get their emails so you can talk to them. Yeah. And, that, and that's so so counterintuitive when you come from a large organization that it's, yeah. of course they have that, but in a, in a, in a completely different way, they have a CRM system and all of that right. stuff. And if you work somewhere in the business, you have nothing to do with it. Right. But it's, it's, it's so essential that you have a, basically a, a way to talk to your customers, potential, yeah. or let's say followers. Yeah. Um, so what is the difference from your perspective between, let's say, having LinkedIn followers and or Facebook followers or any other social platform to having an email list? What is the difference for you? 
Yeah. So the difference that I see is that um, a lot of times with LinkedIn or Facebook, it's it's people that are are more your friends or, or your family um, or maybe not necessarily people that you want to be talking to. I mean, LinkedIn, there's there's maybe more of a chance um, because because they could be closer to, to who you want to be talking to because they found you based on what you're doing and mm -hmm. Um, but a lot of times Facebook isn't necessarily, um, that way, unless you have specifically gone and added those people based on certain qualifications that they have. Um, but that's about you prospecting and finding those people and adding those people. And so there's a chance that those people are, are your friends or are your, your future clients. Yeah. Um, but there's a chance that they're not, but a lot of times with an email list, you collected them based on. Um, something that you put out there that is intended to gather the people that you want to work with. Right. And so those, those lead magnets are, are capturing the people that, that you, that you want to be talking to and could be potential clients. And so um, I think, I think that's the, the biggest difference is mm -hmm. that that list is, is probably closer to, to who you want to be talking to because you put out something that you know um, is something that they need and is going to, um, be beneficial for things that you could uh, push them to later. Yeah. Then like I was, I was talking to a friend the other day and he was saying, I'm working in B2B. I don't yeah. need an email list. What, what is your, <laughs> your thoughts on that? Um, I don't agree. <laughs> um, you needed an email list no matter what. It, it just, it, it doesn't matter because you can, you can collect the, if you're working in B2B, like, well, you can still get the the emails of those businesses. Um, and so it, it just, yeah, that, it doesn't matter. You need an email list no matter what. Um, that's what I have to say to that. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Then um, we're staying, that's the last question in emails, just because it's interesting, most probably for my listeners, because they're not too yeah. much into that. Yeah. So then... I mean, everyone knows like a newsletter perspective of an email list. It's like, hey, yeah. I have a newsletter. Yeah. I'm sending out a newsletter once a week. What What do you recommend yeah. your 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 clients working with emails additionally to having a newsletter? Um, yeah, so there's there's a few things. Um, you know, once somebody joins your list, it's important that you kind of um, indoctrinate them and uh, um, you put them through a sequence that allows them to get to know you. Hmm. and also open up the door for them to potentially work with you. It's not like you have to sell them straight away, but it's kind of like, okay, I'm, I'm opening up the door. Um, and so they understand what I do. Um, and if they want to work with me, then, then they can reach out to me. Um, and so, uh, you know, I think, I think that's, that's one thing that's important with, with emails. Um, I think the other side of it is uh, besides a newsletter is the actual follow-up that goes on um, mm. with emails. And so, you know, you get somebody onto your list or you get them to opt in for something and maybe they didn't buy your next thing. Okay, now you want to follow up with them um, right. because money is definitely made in the follow-up. It is so, so important that you follow up with your people. And, and one way that you can do that is through email. Um, you also can just like get on the phone and, and talk to them. And I think people forget that too. Um, <laughs> you, you could call them, like if you collected their information, then, then yeah. you can call them and, and contact them that way, especially for things that are a little bit more high ticket. Um, but you know, besides a newsletter, um, value, that's another thing. Um, mm -hmm. just, just giving them tons of value. Um, and then that follow up and, you know, that initial, like, Hey, this is, this is what I'm all, all about. Um, but I think a newsletter is really great as well. Cause it just keeps them connected to what's going on. Um, and you know, it could invite them to potentially buy something from you as well. Yeah. It's always interesting to, to, to hear that because I was also so new in that game and I was yeah. prototyping my way into that. And yeah. some are completely saying, hey, you're wasting my time sending me five emails in, in a week or whatever. <laughs> so, so I was really prototyping my ways on how to do that in a, in a proper way. And I'm still, I, I most probably will never be there because it's an ongoing process and yeah. like different different products or different list building mechanisms will bring different clients most probably and they right. they need to be treated differently as well 
Yeah. So slowly going towards an end. So if you would have the chance to work with one of your dreams cli dream clients on 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 an interesting business and that business is like attached to something that's that what everyone in the whole world will be able to see what kind of dream client and business would that be um interesting question um yeah i think that um yeah i'll, I'll go with this one I, i'm working with somebody right now um, that, that's good. That's actually, exactly that. Um, so I'll, I'll use I'll use her as a as an example. Um, you know, she she came to me through through the group as well and was doing one funnel away. Um, had been in the funnel world for for a couple of of years, um, and she had been or she she has been blogging for. Um, I think like seven years now, um, maybe it's longer. And, and she's been building that list and, and she's been building that credibility. And what she hasn't done is she's never sold them one thing, hmm. not one thing. Hmm. She has 50,000 followers on Instagram, 50,000 people. Not bad. Yeah. I mean, like, but she's never sold them a thing. And so, um, you know, I, I, I looked at her and, and she is just so fun to work with because, um, she has a lot of, um, the resources already, and now we're putting it all together and we're choreographing it and mm -hmm. we're just gonna, it's going to be so cool. Um, and we're just in, in the process right now of, um, building out her launch and, and building out the product that she wants to sell. And so I think for me, like, that is the ideal. There's not necessarily like the, the type of business. Um, but what I do like is, is that type of person that's built that and has a mission yeah. and yeah. is excited to, to change the world with the thing that they have. Um, and is just, just ready. And we're putting all the pieces together, um, and opening up the doors for it to just explode. And so I think that's, that's probably my, my ideal. Yeah. Cool. So yeah. looking forward, where do you think you will be in a year from now? And that can be personal perspective, business perspective, as you wish. Um, yeah, for sure. Um, you know, I think in, in a year from now, um, I'm going to be a little bit more one to many in what I'm doing rather than uh, one on one. Hmm. Um, I, I do like working with people one on one, um, but I, I'm excited to get to more people. Um, and so, I, you know, I think in a year from now, um, I'll have a, a course built out um, that will allow more people to go through it and more people to get help. Mm. Um, and so that's that's kind of where I see it, just a little bit more one to many than than one on one in what I'm doing. Yeah, cool. So yeah. How, how do you keep yourself up to date? What are different medias, uh, different topics where people you are following to get interesting things into your ecosystem? Um, like as far as education, as far as knowledge, is that what? Everything it's like news from, from, it's like, how do you get new ideas and, um, what are, what are the things you're following? Um, yeah. So I think, um, one of the biggest ways is, is being in a mastermind. Um, that's, that's a great way to, to get new perspective and, and get, um, new knowledge, um, podcasts. Um, that's, that's always a, a great way as well. Um, you know, staying, staying up to date with what people are putting out and what offers they're putting out and, um, you know, just seeing on Facebook, like, oh, this person's doing that. Oh, that's, that's cool. Like, how can I, how can I apply that thing? Um, you know, and just continuing to, um, you know, gain, gain that knowledge and, and read books and, um, I think, I think those are all, all ways that, that I do that. And, you know, when I have the opportunity to, to go to like a live event, that's, that's always great as well. That's a, a great refresher. And, um, I mean, a lot of them are online right now, but you know, it's, it's great to, to kind of go, okay, this is, this is what's happening. And, and that kind of keeps me up to date as well with, um, what a lot of other marketers are doing. And so I can, you know, put that into what I'm doing and, and making sure that I'm, I'm staying up to date in that way. Yeah. You mentioned mastermind. Yeah. A, a couple of people might not know what that is. Can you briefly explain it? Yeah. So a mastermind is when uh, you get 
I think I think the number is like at least three people together because two like you could just kind of like go back and forth, but at least three, yeah, you can bring in those three different perspectives. But um, you know, a mastermind is is when you get uh, three or more people together to um, talk about ideas and talk about the things going on um, because it's always great to get different perspectives. Um, so you're not just so stuck in in your head and in your world, and somebody can look at it from an outside perspective and go what about this? Like, what about this idea? And, and I've just seen some amazing things come from masterminds. Um, yeah. and you know, you can also look at it from like building a team, um, in, in your world and having, having a team of people that, that you pull together and you talk about an idea and then there's just so many other things that, that can come from it. So, yeah, I mean, that's, that's one of my favorite things is, is having that, having a mastermind. Yeah, I highly recommend it as well. It's yeah. really cool. So where yeah. can people find you? How can people reach out to you? For sure. I mean, best way, uh, come and find me in, in the Funnel After Party group. Um, that's that's a great way to get connected with me. Um, you know, obviously on Facebook, it's under Alexi, A-L-E-X-I, Rafael um, on Instagram. And then I also have a podcast called Funnel After Party as well. And so you can find me through that um those those are the best ways to find me yeah and i will put all the links as well into the show notes that people can directly reach out to you awesome cool. i appreciate that lexi thank you very much for getting up very 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 early and being on my show <laughs> it's a pleasure talking to you yeah it was so great being on thank you for having me thanks Take me to another place where the fairy tales will end. Magic, magic, land. Magic, magic, land. To another place where the fairy tales will end. Magic, magic, land.